All right, I am on with the legendary statement analyst, Peter Hyatt. And Peter has been on my channel uh, two, three times now. Welcome to the show again. Thank you for having me. Now, I noticed earlier that you were doing a quick analysis on the juror who apparently came out to talk about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial last week, the week before I lost track of all time. And I wanted to have you on very quickly to talk about what you found from the statements that were released. Yeah. So the first thing that I thought was interesting in just doing a short video on this statement was um, several had the reaction of this is not a real juror, which is very interesting to me because if you look at the language, you might come away with that thought. But I don't see any motive for media not vetting the witness Generally speaking, we, I, I say often that we live in an age of deception and media is the, the cover for that deception, but there has to be a motive. And here it doesn't seem to be, at least that I, could, I can discern, any particular motive for putting on someone that is a, a fraud, for example, uh, and getting a quote. But the, those who, who think that it might be, um, it is interesting because in the language itself it is someone that seems completely disconnected from any objectivity. But I think it's found within the, the answers here. I think it's a real juror. Oh, from the trial? Yeah, I do. I, I think it's from the trial. And uh, I think the juror is giving away personality traits here and priority. Very interesting. Okay, great. So can we go through it then and, and figure out how you came to um, the conclusion? Sure. So today was my last day of being a juror on the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial, and I wish to remain anonymous, but I thought I'd give some insight on my thoughts about the trial the juror began. So this is the uh, media editing. Mm -hmm. I don't follow pop culture too much, so I haven't really been a fan of Johnny Depp or Amber Heard, so I felt I was able to be pretty unbiased about the whole thing, but from the very beginning when Amber Heard was testifying, everything just seemed so off with how she kept making eye contact with me, he continued. It made me extremely uncomfortable to where I would no longer look over at her when she was giving her answers. The juror continued to speak out saying, I would just listen intently and everything she was saying came off like BS. Okay. So we'll break this down. This statement, and I, I don't know about the editing, and I can't vouch mm. for that. And I'm looking at just that, the statement itself. It's very short. And we may have ideas of whether it's a male or female. But if we're going to make a definitive answer, we need more, uh, a larger statement for that. Here we go. It sounded like a male just off of my uneducated ear. Yes. And, and um, there are things that will support that down here. Uh, for a conclusion, though, sometimes it's a little bit trickier. Sure, sure. So today was my last day. This is where the uh, juror began his statement, and I use his universally. This means this is a priority. And here we have with uh, my last day, with the word last, indicates the passing of time. So we call this the element of time. Time is at play in the juror's mind. Uh, a lot of jurors in uh, criminal cases may talk like this when they're really tired of a case when they just want done and it's been dragging on forever and they want out. Um, mm. What we'll look for as we progress through this is why is time important? It wasn't the last day of the trial. It was the last, my last day. So it's very personal, which I think oh, is going to be insightful into what may be the juror's priority and thinking as it unravels. So this was my last day of being a juror on the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial. So we always look at the um, order of which someone speaks or writes, and this was I believe spoken, to indicate a priority. Mm -hmm. And most people I've heard and read say Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, um, he's older, he's done more movies, uh, they may be more familiar with his work. I had not heard of Amber Heard before this trial, so uh, I really didn't have much thoughts on that. 
but there's another this... reason too and the case itself i believe is depp v heard or johnny depp v amber heard so okay. just the actual that this struck me as odd personally because the juror who was sitting on the case named johnny depp versus amber heard or john c depp versus amber heard it's odd to reverse it it is and it, it's significant that's a great point because he was suing her so there, there's an expectation that it should have been first good point and i will remain anonymous is not what he said it's i wish so this is a point of weakness. So I recognize that it's not the last day of the trial. It's my last day. It's personal. And I'd like you to consider that um, as we go through it, that this is quite personal to the subject of being a juror in the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial with Amber coming first here. Mm -hmm. So the last day, which is mine, is associated with Amber first. And I wish to remain anonymous. I wish is not a strong assertion. So by using I wish, there may be a lowered expectation for the subject to be, to uh, continue as being anonymous. So I, the subject is casting doubt right here. Mm -hmm. And then he affirms the doubt by using the self-refutation of the word but. Mark McClish um, told me when I interviewed him, he said, but stands for behold, the underlying truth. <laughs> That's good. But I thought I'd give some insight on the jury deliberations, mm. you no, know, on my thoughts. Mm. And so in the first sentence that the person speaks, it is all about him or her, but it's all about the subject. This is the priority. This is, it's about me, the speaker. So the subject is not sharing jury deliberations, not sharing evidence that we heard, uh, important testimony that we recognize, uh, collaborating testimony, none of that. It's my thoughts from my last day, and I wish to remain anonymous, but, so it's all about me. And um, I think those that, when they first heard this said, this person is seeking attention, uh, to which I agree. It's an attention seeking type of situation. So after that intro, the jurors said- Is this said, like putting a toe in the water out of curiosity? I'm sorry to interrupt, but like when you say attention seeking, it's very wishy-washy language in the whole, I wish to, but is that possibly somebody who is sort of throwing a line out there, seeing how people react and then determining, well, maybe I'll go on TV if, it, if the response is right, or, or I just kind of want to test the waters. Yeah, that's what I think it is too. Um, okay. Almost like polling to see if something or a phrase is going to work and then we're going to run with it. Um, oh. This is the first step I think in seeking more attention. And that's why we have the person's wish and we have the self refutation. Uh, I think you're correct. And, that, and that's, that's my thinking as well is that um, if this goes well, if um, for example, someone like me puts this out and that becomes known or, or it gets shared and the person sees it, I wouldn't be surprised for the subject to back away. But I think this is the desire, and it, it is like casting out a, a net to see if there's any, any nibbles that can go further with this thing. Some jurors over the years have gotten legs from their stories, and some have mm -hmm. not. And oh, I but this one would. I mean, if this is a juror and he comes out, I promise he or she will get a lot of attention because I will be one person waving hey, hey, <laughs> come on by. <laughs> and if the person is not a real juror, it will explain the red that we're seeing here. That it's, it's mm. nonsense. I, I do think it is, and I, I do think it's attention seeking. Uh, and behind attention seeking, uh, people always talk about the, the void, and they're correct, the emotional void, the personality need of more attention. 
But in a case that has a celebrity status, attention seeking can often be a means to some form of of celebrity, which can be a means to some form of ga gathering of money. So I think there's always that look, I'm going to write a book or, or have it ghost written with my sure. name, something somewhere along the way that will it'll translate into profit. Mm -hmm. Then the uh, subject goes, and this is actually what we would call a larger Hina clause or explanation, but I've only narrowed it down a little bit here. I don't follow pop culture too much, so I haven't really been a fan of Johnny Depp or Amber Heard. So the first thing we notice is the pronoun I tells us this person is now psychologically present mm -hmm. in the statement. It means we're likely to get reliable material, even if the person's deceptive, within that deception is going to be reliable material. This is why we don't um, dismiss deceptive people. We listen to them. Hmm. So he's present. He's there. He's he, we, we have, he's got our attention. Mm -hmm. The first thing he goes to is the negative, or what we call the rule of the negative. This is an elevation of sensitivity of whatever information is now going to follow. And okay. I think you've, you've heard me explain that before, where uh, thou shalt not is a lot more impactful and memorable than the thou shalt in life. Mm. So someone that doesn't believe believe this, I simply say to them, go tell your seven-year-old boy, don't walk in that puddle. And the first thing in kiddo's mind is, hmm, I'm going to walk in that puddle. Mm -hmm. It's just an elevation of importance and sensitivity that gets our attention. Also, it's not do not. Do not would be a flag that it could be deception. Well, it, and, this, and this could be deception, um, mm -hmm. which means the person is psychologically present right into this thing and has a need to deceive that he's not following pop culture, which I think translates to social media. So mm -hmm. what we want to do is believe the subject unless he talks us out of it. So I want to believe okay. that the subject does not follow pop culture. Now, I'm not a big follower of pop culture. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't been to the movie theater in years, for example, and I don't have a television service hooked up to anything like that. So I want to believe them. That's true. Let's see if these words are supported. Because this is good. This is strong. I don't follow pop culture. Hey, I believe you. Mm -hmm. Then he says, too, too much. much. Yeah. So now i like, okay, that's a little bit um, of a shading, what we call a weakness, to say, well, maybe you do a little bit. Now, I didn't follow the Depp Heard trial very much at all. You hear mm -hmm. how I qualify that? I saw some things on Twitter. I saw some video clips that were very funny at times. Um, but that's mm -hmm. all I did. I didn't see it, uh, the trial in not more than you know, 15 or 20 seconds here or there. But there was some. Now, I don't follow very much, uh, follow pop culture too much. So the question is in this person's mind, what is much? What is too much? Mm. And here we have a need to explain. And another negative. I haven't been a fan of Johnny Depp. Is not to say I'm not a fan of Johnny Depp. Qualifier in there with really. Yeah. And then we have, <laughs> yeah, very good. Then we have another point of weakness right there. So we have too much. We have really and then we have so interesting a reversal of the names and i was going to say the order was flipped yep. which is interesting because very very important for us just as we noted it here amber comes first mm -hmm. on the trial johnny comes first with a fan the word fan so is it to say, I 
follow this religiously, and I am a fan of Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. That reversal is so important. Um, this is unusual, and I think you point out probably the best explanation on that in terms of uh, in the news it was always reported with the plaintiff first. So this yeah, is, and if you go to court every day, you are a yeah. jury member of blah blah blah. It, it would just seem to lock in more, but then the the second part kind of backs it up, like he has he or she has a more of a psychological connection with Amber Heard, positive or negative. Yeah, but ne it's a negative one here. Um, but we have fan of Johnny Depp with the Johnny coming first. Positive. It, yeah, it would be something that would be rather easy to include to conclude by saying our subject is a fan of johnny depp our subject mm -hmm. is not going to like amber too much yeah i you could take out the don't and they haven't really and you probably have the sentence correct and the yes. too much i yes. i follow pop culture and am a fan of johnny depp <laughs> exactly amber's going to come second now when it comes to being a fan but it gets even worse here. I highlight this in blue because it explanations of why something is happening when uh, I don't think the reporter would have said, excuse me, why haven't you been a fan of Johnny sure. Depp or, or why are you able to be unbiased? This is a, a need to persuade. Um, this is in a sense is the linguistic version of poor acting. <laughs> so we have both of these together and Analysts that, that are trained will recognize the, the blue there as being highly sensitive information, um, where when we have more than one close together, we're, generally we're looking at deception. And this is then affirmed by the rest of the statement. The person felt, not that I was able to be unbiased, I felt I was able to be unbiased. So this is another weak assertion, and then we have another qualifier with pretty unbiased. Mm -hmm. The subject is saying, listen, I follow pop culture. I'm a fan of Johnny Depp. I was quite biased. Yeah. Pretty is like mostly unbiased other than I, I wish he, uh, he could marry my daughter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, something else at play here. It's interesting. Um, and I, I'm taking this from one of my colleagues that just sent an email over on this one. But my, I... I, 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 mm -hmm. I again, um, my thoughts, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to culminate here, I think. Let's not jump ahead. So I felt I was able to be pretty unbiased about the whole thing, and this might be uh, somewhat related to its ending here, my last day, mm -hmm. then the refutation, but... But from the no. very beginning, again, time, when Amber Heard was testifying, everything just seemed so off. Now, just means we're comparing it with something else. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I go to sell the car and I know that you have $20,000 and I list it at $25,000, then I work my way down and say, well, it's just $20,000. I'm now comparing it with what? Uh, originally it was up for. So this yeah, person right. is thinking about something else at this time. This is to the exclusion of other thoughts. This person will not allow a critical thinking of Amber Heard's testimony because this person is shut down. This person is a fan of Johnny Depp and like so many in social media, Amber Heard was demonized was demonized. And it became, instead of two gray hats, we're looking for which one is uh, actually responsible for defamation, mm -hmm. which it would be, you know, the, what legally what we're doing. People have a natural inclination. I want this person to have the white hat good guy, this one have the bad, bad hat, black hat bad guy, and make a very strong demarcation between the two. And life isn't that way. No. And especially two celebrities is not going to be that way. So he is now deified and she is now demonized um, across social media for the, for the most part. 
Everything just seemed so off but how she kept making eye contact with me. So we're not being given any of the evidence examined, any of the credibility issues that may have come up um, with what say uh, he or she, and that really the jury would have had, especially in deliberations, that's the most interesting part of the uh, hearing. So it only seemed, and it just seemed, at the exclusion of everything else, mm-hmm. which isn't true. There were some things that she was reliable on, um, smaller points, but there were things that reliable on. Sure. This person is excluding it all out. When it's personalized, it's it, it's not saying evidence like you pointed out. It's saying I, in bottom line, I don't like this woman. It, it's yes. what this is saying in yes. my mind. Why not? Why not? And watch how personal this is. Eye contact with me, and I'm going to clip this from my colleagues because I think it's a brilliant point. One of my colleagues asked the question, did this juror assimilate himself with Johnny Depp? Hmm. It's possible. Yeah. Um, This is so personal. This is so emotional. This is so subjective that that is a valid question. And I think it's correct. I think he aligned himself somehow or saw himself through Johnny Depp. People um, of all generations that I'm aware of, especially since in the last hundred years or so with motion pictures, will, especially when they're younger, align themselves with an actor or actress. Mm. And so um, you'll see- Well, the whole case is Team Johnny, Team Amber. Yes. You'll see um, in high school, fashion just go like a flat a flash by of a school of fish an actor and actress put their hair in a certain way or their clothes in a certain way and everyone just followed along that's during a time of high hormonal activity from adolescence so there's a greater impression left there which is one of the arguments of why pornography is so dangerous for kids why marijuana is so dangerous for kids um, the impression upon the brain is powerful Mm-hmm. Um, music, what they listen to. Um, Advertising dollars adver- are focused on the, um, I believe it's 18 to 29 category because when you imprint, like, let's say you're a Ford person for life or a Chevy person for life, that's why they hit that so hard is because it imprints on them, which can further imprint on their children, and it affects literally generations. Exactly. And so if this is correct, if this theory is correct, I don't know if it is, that somewhere in his movies, this subject may have assimilated himself and admired or looked up to. It's possible. Yeah, and that's why it's so personal. Instead of saying, well, you know, two dissociate celebrities who get in a lot of trouble in life, this one appeared to defame that one so much to the point where it can can impact his ability to earn a living. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the judgment is such and such. Not at all. This is personal. This is this person is in this statement strongly. Um, They are psychologically, they're emotionally impacted by this. And I don't think that person wanted it to end Hmm. because it's all about them. Some distancing language from the trial itself would suggest the last day is like, what a relief. I'm out of here. No. Right. Or finally. Yes. (laughs) That would be me probably. (laughs) That would be most people. Um, But I think especially for males, because females will change um, their fashion more quickly, uh, males can can clip onto something Mm -hmm. and not let go, especially if they they grab on it when they're younger. And they'll hold on to it sometimes for all their life. Um, Yeah, men have an obsessive quality sometimes. See Stalkers 101. (laughs) uh, Bob Dylan was always accused of plagiarism. And Mm. uh, it's true, but it's not just true. It's uh, at times extreme. And over with the advent of the Internet, the plagiarism has been more readily caught. And Woody Guthrie, I believe, right? Woody Guthrie, um, that was at the beginning, but then everybody else <laughs> he plagiarized too. But he used that Woody Guthrie voice and persona 
that wasn't his own. He could croon as a teenager. Uh, the old recordings from uh, like 1958, 1959, uh, he actually had a voice that uh, could be described as pleasing. Hmm. But yeah, unusual, and it's not released. But that's, he took okay, it That's fascinating. Himself. I hate to hijack it and go the other way, but um, I've listened to a lot of comics and podcasts, you know, comedians talking about each other and how like every comedian that performed in the New York area was a clone of Dave Attell to start their career. And then over time, and they all admit it, they, they're like, you know, I sounded just like him. He was such an influence. And, and then they start to merge and then shift into their own voice. I, I imagine it's the same with musicians. Like you, you start to play like David Gilmore of Pink Floyd or Eddie Van Halen or, or, or whatever. And then over time you shift. But, um, one of my concerns about kids growing up today, especially uh, with the culture around them, is the uh, hypersexualization of culture, the music that where many times the beat never changes. So mm. the, the, the brain is actually doing less engagement. And mm. it's, it's more like a, like a short high that goes by. And we're all influenced by, it, by what's around us. And but loudness here, wars, sure. Yeah, I, I think that there is a, um, there's a real strong emotional connection that this person has with Johnny Depp. And it, to the point where maybe this person felt attacked by Amber Heard's words as Johnny Depp did. Now watch this. Everything seems so off with how she kept making eye contact with the jury. No, with me. Mm -hmm. Now I had read that she was making a lot of eye contact and um, some attorneys do advise doing that. And, uh, mm, but that's not what our subject is saying. This is personal. She was making eye contact with me. I wonder, and this is, the, uh, I think, a great question. Did our subject feel threatened as if he himself was Johnny Depp? Right. Or was it, is it possible that she was looking at other jurors and not him? So he mm -hmm. was angry about that. But in other words, something is amiss here. And it's very personal and it's very emotional and it has nothing to do with the objectivity of a trial. Right. right. Made me uncomfortable. It made me extremely uncomfortable. Okay. And what Opposite I said, qualifier. This one is actually going harder, not... He's not pulling away, he's digging in. Yes, and in fact, we would call this a weakness due to the context. Now, if this was a criminal context where uh, a serial killer was staring at him, it could be unnerving. An actress? Not so much. Actress I don't know, have you looked at her testimony? Excuse me? <laughs> I don't know, have you looked at her testimony? <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> this is uh, incongruent with the context, mm -hmm. but it is congruent with his emotions all up here. Right. Um, this is all an emotional reaction to where I would no longer look over at her. And this is what I think he was obsessed with her. He was looking over at her. Probably not just when she was testifying. But he wants to tell us when, which brings a question of why. Why do you need to tell us when? I think that um, this particular juror was obsessed and looking at her constantly, maybe even glaring, maybe even glaring in some kind of defense of, of Johnny Depp. Or assertively avoiding. No, 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 I'm not listening, I'm not listening, I'm not listening. I would just listen intently. And there we have, again, the dependent word just, which indicates a comparison with something else. Mm -hmm. I would just listen intently. And she wasn't credible. And witnesses didn't back up her statement. No, and everything, everything. So this is like a hyperbolic statement. We have sure. extremely uncomfortable and everything she was saying came off like BS. That is all subjectivity. 
This is an emotional statement, and the biggest theme and conclusion of the statement is the word me. This is me. This is about me, not about Johnny Depp, whom I you know, look up to, or Amber Heard, who I demonize. This is about me and this person. So, I, so I think you know my conclusion really is that um, although there's a lot of levels here, this is about the person who is seeking attention and probably is a huge fan, not only of Johnny Depp, but a follower of pop culture. This, this is just a little bit older in age. Mm. Uh, it may have been a teen um, when Johnny Depp was really popular. I don't know when he was really popular, but he, was, he had to be it for the name. Wow. Well, Peter, this has been fascinating. And I want to know what you think. Please comment below. Is Peter right? Is he wrong? Are we all wet? What do you think? Is this actually a juror? I'm going to put out another question to you, and that is, is this the famous juror number nine or I? Please comment below. And Peter, thank you so much. Thanks, Admiral. I appreciate it.